afternoon and welcome to the channel. I've just returned from 2,100 miles, about 3,400 kilometer ride around the Scottish Highlands on the R1250 GS. Great time. Hopefully we'll have some footage shortly, although I've collected a lot. It now takes a lot of work and skill to put it together. And, um, a, I don't have a lot of time and B, I probably don't have a huge amount of skills. But anyway, I um, got back from there, as I say, six and a half thousand miles on the bike, somewhere near that. So 2,100 on the trip, 6,500 on the bike in total. And the front tyre, which was fitted to the machine from new, which is a Bridgestone Battle Axe A41 Adventure, has now got very, very close to the wear bars. So it's time for that to be changed. I intend to remove the front wheel and take it to a motorcycle repair shop to have the tyre fitted. That's mainly because he says he can fit it quicker with a wheel delivered than, than in the bike. So very shortly we'll go out to the bike and see how I do it. But I thought I'd just run through what we're going to need to remove the wheel. I've got a 17 millimeter socket. That's to remove the bolt that sort of fixes the spindle in place. Although it's not the only thing that fixes the spindle in place, but you certainly need a 17 mil uh, socket to remove that bolt. I've got a Torx 45 key and that's for the pinch bolts that also either fork at the bottom has a pinch bolt that actually holds the spindle and stops it from rotating and also keeps it a little bit in place. I've got a 13 millimeter socket and the 13 millimeter socket is to take the bolts out of the brake calipers because we're gonna to need to remove those. And I've got a Torx 30 key. And the Torx 30 key is to fit the ABS sensor. Now, there's not really any need to remove the ABS sensor, but I'm being incredibly cautious here because the likelihood is, knowing my luck, I would pull it forward and, and break the ABS sensor. So I'm gonna remove the ABS sensor and, and keep it out of the way when I actually remove the wheel. I've also got a, a couple of these. These are uh, zip ties, which have been just joined together to make a reasonable length of zip tie. And I'm going to use that through the brake caliper and probably around my crash bars to hang the brake caliper and to take the load of the brake caliper rather than just leaving it hanging on the brake pipes and the ABS uh, wiring. So in a minute we'll see you out by the bike and we'll go through how we remove the wheel. And then once I've had the tyre fitted I'll show you how we refit it again and some of the things we might need to do before we start to ride the bike again. So let's get out with the bike. Okay, so hopefully as you can see here, she's a Bridgestone Battle Axe Adventure A41 and size is 120-70 R19. So that's the tyre we're going to replace her with. And hopefully if I spin this around, um, you'll be able to see, we're looking for the worst of the wear bars and of course the worst of the wear bars will be near the centre, but there's a wear bar just there. I don't know whether you can quite see that in the picture. But you can see it's getting pretty close to smooth in that place and if I just go around and try and find another one there's another one there getting fairly close to the middle and uh, another one just there again getting fairly close to the middle there's certainly not much of a lip there um, so we'll look to get her changed and we'll start taking the wheel off Okay, so first things first here, I hope you can see. Um, I've got the bike on the centre stand and I'm using a hydraulic bottle jack, but I'm not actually using the hydraulics of the bottle jack. My reasoning behind that is that the front wheel is going to be out for maybe a couple of three days and the hydraulic jack could start to basically move downwards and, and lose pressure in its hydraulics. So I've had somebody lean on the back of the bike and I've used the screw extension in the jack so that effectively it's acting a little bit like an axle stand and certainly if you had axle stands that might be a better thing to use or maybe a very large chock of wood to hold it so that it is firmly fixed and isn't going to gradually creep down and maybe the bike collapse and fall over. Okay so first thing is to remove the 17 millimeter bolt and this bolt actually holds the spindle and stops the spindle from moving. We've got a couple of pinch bolts at the front here that stop it rotating. So with it using a 17 millimeter socket, we'll remove that bolt. And there she blows. And now we can see it's a clear piece here. Okay, and more for safety's sake than a necessity, we're going to use a Torx 30 key to remove the ABS sensor. There we go, and if we look at that bolt carefully, um, 
we'll see that it does have Loctite on it. So we'll just make sure that we Loctite that again when we put it back. And then we just pull the ABS sensor out to remove it. As I say, no necessity to do that. It's just I want to feel safe and this will all come away then with the brake caliper. Okay, so now we're going to remove the two 13 mil headed bolts from the brake caliper. Like so. So there's the two 13 mil headed bolts. Now this is located on dowels just underneath. You can probably see the dowels just here. And I'm just going to twist the caliper a little bit backwards and forwards. That just gives me a little bit of slack with which to uh, separate the pads so it'll be much easier to put them back on. So now if we look here carefully you'll see that I've put my cable tie down through here back underneath so it's underneath this casting and back out the other side. And now I'm just going to gently tie this back with the cable tie around my crash bar like so and now the the weight is being taken or will be now is being taken by the crash bar not by the uh, not by the cable and the and the hoses okay so you'll notice as well just so they don't get lost I've put the bolts from the brake calipers into the place and the bolt from the ABS sensor back into place and now we'll just go and repeat what we've just done with the brake caliper on the other side. Okay so once again remove the two 13 mil headed bolts like so. Ease the caliper back off its dowels here and then just tweak it left and right Let's just separate the pads enough for it to be put through there and then same again just route my cable tie up through like so over the crash bar and just pulled up to remove the weight off the pipe so it's not actually physically hanging off the pipe. Now all we've got to do is the two pinch bolts either side and we should be able to push the caliper out. But once again, I'm just going to put the bolts I've removed back in place so I know exactly where they go. So lastly, it's the two T45 pinch bolts. Like so. We'll take them all the way out. I'm, I'm not sure that there's any real need to take them all the way out. Show you the other side. Just put that bolt on the other side so I know which one comes out precisely from which side. So there's the two pinch bolts out. And now it should be a relatively simple task from this, the left hand side as you're sat on the machine to push the spindle and remove it all the way out. The wheel, as you can see now, just simply rolls out. And that's it. So that's the wheel removed. I can do a bit of cleaning while i am got the wheel out of the machine, but I'm gonna run that now down to the dealers and have the new tire fitted and we'll be back to refit it. Just one very quick thing to remind you of on the ABS side, so I've got the wheel reversed now, so this is on the left hand side as you sit on the bike. There is a collar here. I would suggest that you take that out before you take it down to the dealers purely because it could very easily get lost. So here we have the new tyre fitted to it, Bridgestone Battle Axe Adventure A50. A41, I beg your pardon. Um, we're now going to slide it back in the vehicle. Just one of the things I will show you because I dropped the wheel off at a dealer. You'll see that I actually put cling film straight through the wheel, block this off. Of course, he's had to use a hole in it for the balancing. And then the other side, you can see he's had a hole in it. But um, I put that on there just while it was laying around in his place. It wouldn't fill with dust or grit or anything. So um, I'm pleased to have done that. But as I say, this is the new tire. Obviously the tire itself has got to be run in. Um, it's a very shiny surface. And certainly if you were to use that in the wet and go for it, you would uh, 
probably find yourself on your backside so um, we'll be taking it nice and easy while we run it in 36 psi and it's just a basically a reverse offs but we'll uh, we'll show you how that happens and we'll also give you the torque settings although what I would say to you is the torque settings are in the BMW owner's manual so please look up your own bikes torque settings don't go by mine I will give you mine um, but only as guidance please go in and check yours so let's make a start so here's the wheel spindle you'll see that I've cleaned that off thoroughly and this is the spacer that goes on the ABS side of the bike hopefully you can see that and down here I've just got a little uh, copper grease so I'm just very lightly going to grease the spindle like so wet in there but just grease the spindle not too much so that it all fires out all over the place but just enough to prevent corrosion like so and I'm also going to put a little around the flange of the spacer because that sits inside the inside the seal so a little bit of grease there so we've now got the spacer in here so hopefully you can see well maybe you can't but it's perhaps just a little out of shot but here I've got the spacer in place lubricated I'm now just gonna ease the wheel in and you can see the spacer goes inside here and the spacer for the other side is actually this flange here so I'm actually going to apply again a little bit of grease there because that's actually going to sit against the seal on the other side of the wheel so that'll just help that and then we just simply insert as you can see the spindle in and with it lined up just push it in situ not quite in there yet So, like so. So, you can see that the spindle itself now is pushed through. And certainly if we just look down here, you'll see a little bit of excess grease. We'll just wipe that off. Um, but you don't, you don't need much, because if you put a lot on it, it will only just squeeze its way all out the side. So we've pushed that in all the way now. And now we're going to go to the other side and put the bolt in. Okay, so the first thing is to put the 20 mil 17 mil bolt here um, that actually has a torque value as we can see in my book of 30 newton meters I'll say again please check your own but this will draw the spindle all the way through so before we've done up any of these pinch bolts we need to to do this up I will talk all of these up shortly so that's the center spindle bolt in and so the wheel now is actually itself in place. Now quite importantly, after we've put this in, we don't want to pinch these bolts up here on the bottom of the forks. What we're actually gonna do is just put those in finger tight on both sides. So I'm just taking the other side and doing it up finger tight. And the reason for that is, is we're gonna take the bike off its stand. Once we've torqued this center bolt up here to 30 Newton meters, we're then, before we tighten these pinch bolts either side, we're gonna bounce the bike on its frame that helps to center everything out but that's pretty much the last thing we'll do and then we'll torque up the pinch bolts on the side the next thing we're going to do is put the brake caliper okay, so you'll remember that we strung up the caliper to my crash bars with cable ties to stop any strain on the brake hose here and the ABS wire here so I've now released that um, and I'm now going to put the caliper on I also ease the caliper out so that gave me a bit of room and I should be able like so to very simply drop it back in, not forgetting that I need to put this ABS wire holder here into place. And then we'll just screw these down. Again, I'm gonna do these to a first pinch first. They will be torqued up later in my machine to 35 Newton meters. Your machine may be different, particularly if you've got a 1200, because you may well have the Brembo discs and I don't know what those are, so please check it in your own owner's manual, but mine's gonna to be torqued to 35 Newton meters. 
Okay, so same on the off side or right hand side of the bike. Again, I've parted the pads when I took it off, so we should find they'll slide on fairly easy, like so. Onto the dowels, no ABS obviously on this side. So we'll just literally get the two bolts and wind those into finger tight. And I'll just loosely pinch them with this just to hold it in and before I torque it and I'll come back and torque those to 35 newton meters again check your own thanks okay so lastly in reassembly you'll remember we took the ABS wheel speed sensor off and you'll also remember hopefully that this six mil bolt had some thread lock on it we showed you that in the disassembly so I'm just going to put a little dab of thread lock back onto that push the speed sensor into the wheel like so and refit the screw and that as we'll remember has a Torx 30 key and I think from memory this should have a torque value on my machine yep of 8 newton meters so pretty light I'm just going to touch it up for the moment just so that it's all hanging together and as I say I'll finally torque those um, in a second. I'm now going to take the bike off its stand, I'm going to bounce it on the forks a few times, that's in an effort to uh, settle this here and then I will do up the pinch bolts, the Torx 45 pinch bolts that hold them and those are at 19 newton meters on my machine, so 19 newton meters. So that's about it, that's the wheel fitted. I'll go ahead and torque all of those up and hopefully you've learnt that if you uh, or learnt from that. If you have, give us a thumbs up, give us a like, any comments are welcome and I try to answer all of them so hopefully you'll get feedback from me as well but the feedback is always great. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you again soon.